Hello, Miami. You're watching 305 Sports Now, your home podcast and channel for all things Miami sports related. I am Will. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for watching 305 Sports Now. Once again, I am your host, Will, and thank you for joining me this week. For today's episode and I just want to talk about another possible cane this young man has been talked about as far as recruiting sites go as far as canes verse x first goes whatever you want to say it amongst my colleagues as well and that young man is Chris Ewald Jr. Now Chris Ewald Jr. is an interesting character because he was formerly committed to Michigan right he was formerly committed to Michigan decommits and most recruiting sites have him projected to become a Miami Hurricane. Hence the reason why we are doing a possible Kane segment on Chris Ewald. Now, I want to talk about Chris Ewald. Chris Ewald is six feet tall, 160 pounds. He is from Shamana Madonna over in Hollywood, Florida as well. He is ranked 17th nationally. In some cases, go to on three. He's actually ranked 12th. Uh, 17th nationally is the 17th best cornerback in the country, 21st best player in the state of Florida. Now, this kid is really good, all right? When you talk, when you check out the huddle highlights, if you go to the huddle highlights, this kid is absolutely amazing as far as cornerback goes. And we know that the Canes need help at the cornerback position, at the defensive back position, as that is one position that Miami is struggling a bit in terms of having depth, okay? So having a kid like this come in, as well as DJ Pickett as well, will be absolutely fantastic for the Miami Hurricanes who are trying to build and stack talent for years to come to have very successful football teams. But I want to talk about a little bit about his stats. So in 2023, this past season, 45 tackles, 20 pass breakups, and two interceptions did this young man have, right? So uh, so I want to break down my analysis on the kid. So first things foremost, the kid's a beast. He's a flat-out stud. He is a pure boundary corner. You could probably play him in the slot as well. He's, he's, that, uh, he's that talented. Uh, but he loves loves the boundary. He plays a lot of boundary over at Shamana Madonna, which means he's taken on a lot of a lot of teams' most elite receivers. So he's taking on the creme of the creme when it comes to taking on his opponents. And we know that Shamana Madonna is always playing very good competition because they're always in the state championship finals or playoffs, etc. Right. So one thing I like, I like about this kid, we're looking at his video, is that he can play press coverage, loves press, bump and run, will fit in a very good system like that. He also could also play off man. So if you want to put him in a bit of a zone style defense, which is kind of like sometimes Gidgey likes to do the complicated schemes, he could fit in as well. Uh, he could break on the ball very well. What he might break on the ball is that he could backpedal, but once he knows where the ball is going, he snap of a finger, he's right there breaking up the play, getting interception, making a tackle, etc. His footwork is amazing. He's one of the things that we see a lot of times in defensive backs is when they're beat or they're slightly beat. They have a tendency of not turning around and keeping their eye on the receiver, which leads to a lot of pass interference calls. This kid does not do that. He has very good instincts, and he's always has the ball. He always has his head turned around and is able to make a play on the ball because of it, which gives uh, which gives him an opportunity to have breaks from referees, which will not which will basically mean he will not get called for pet for PIs. One thing referees hate or are always going to call is if the defensive back is facing the receiver. This young man does not face the receiver. When he feels the ball is out of the quarterback's hands, he will turn around. He will turn around and he will make a play on the ball or make a play on the receiver, however the case goes. But the bottom line is, guaranteed this kid will not be called for a pass interference if he's consistently looking at where the ball is and making a play on the ball and not so much trying to tackle defenders in general. So this kid is very good at that. He's very good at, again, playing the ball, keeping his eye on the football in general, which, which again will delineate you know the, the the fact that he will get penalties so that's a good thing and that's what i love about corners as well um can play without uh committing penalties i already mentioned that as well he's a guy that again that could that could that could take on anybody's speed and the boundary can take on the fastest receiver but he's also a guy that if, if it's a slant pass in general he's also stays with receivers without also committing a penalty either so if there's a slant being thrown he's able to make a play on the ball as well without getting calls good instincts could break on the ball knows where the ball is going to be could front his receiver as well 
to be able to um, break up the football, get the pick, make the tackle if need be as well. Could also make tackles. He's also a solid tackler as well. Knows how to use his hips. Knows how to drive his shoulders into players as well. So this is a good thing for uh, for the Miami Hurricanes if they could pick this kid up. Drake Stubbs just committed to USC. I mean, it's March. Who knows? You know, but I do think that this kid, uh, as far as things go, has a very good opportunity to be a Miami Hurricane. And I and I like I like. And let me tell you, the Shamana Madonna pipeline is very good. They produce good football players. We've seen. What they did last recruiting cycle, we see the Saquon Patterson as well as doing very well in practice for the Canes over in spring ball. So I am excited to find out if Chris Ewald does commit to Miami, how he will be used in Gidry's defense. And I will say this, though. A lot of the projections I do think are true. My sources have told me, those who have spoken with him, that he really does like Miami. Again, Jim Harbaugh goes to the NFL which is very normal. A lot of players decommit. He's one of the decommitted, and I do think that he's Miami's player to lose. And this is a guy you have got to get, have got to get. DJ Pickett is a guy you could put at the safety, and this is a kid that he will lock down the boundary for you. So Chris Ewald Jr., mark my words, if the Miami Hurricanes pick this kid up, pick this kid up, and he commits, and he stays committed, all right, he's going to be the next great Miami defensive back corner boundary corner that we've seen in a very very long time so i'm hoping uh he is the next domino to fall we just had jara pringle commit to miami hurricanes very happy to hear that we got a, a nice fast uh running back that's shifty also very powerful as well runs away from defenders we got that guy and hopefully the next the next commit that i'm hearing rumors that may commit is chris ewald i know tj alfred is slated for march 30th but i do think that um that we, we may get a commitment Maybe before that, I don't know. I'm not sure. That just seems to be what, I'm, what I've been hearing here and there. But the bottom line is, I really hope Ewald commits real soon. Stays committed. Mar really doesn't lose that many commits unless something happens. Uh, so that's pretty much where I'm at. Ladies and gentlemen, straight to the point. It is spring break. I want you guys to have a good time. If you like what you heard, please do not forget to like, share, and serve through five sports now. Ladies and gents, I will be live Thursday evening. I'm working on bringing on guests. All right, we will be doing some dolphin talk. I will be talking about Jackson Powers, the... Uh, offensive lineman out of Oregon. We'll be talking about the new hip drop, ba- hip drop band tackle from the NFL, which has me very upset. And of course, I plan to shoot the crap a little bit, maybe talk a little movies with my guests as well uh, to see how things go. And of course, I will be doing another possible Kane segment this weekend. My next uh, possible Kane will be wide receiver standout Cortez Mills, the favorite amongst myself and also the the gentleman up at you heard. Guys, if you like what you heard, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Fire Sports Now. Stay safe. God bless you soon. Go Canes. Bye-bye, guys. Take care.